Hey everyone, welcome to the Coastal Podcast. I'm Pastor Lucas Granger and want to say thank you for listening in. May this podcast bring some light to your world today. Enjoy grace and peace. Good morning, Coastal. All right. God is good all the time. That's good. I got that from one of my favorite preachers. Mr. Jim Burns. Love you, brother. All right. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the introduction this morning. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get right into it. Um, I have a lot to cover. Uh, my last sermon was only 20 minutes, so this one's going to be an hour. <laughs> so I hope that y'all had breakfast. All right, so I do have a lot of scripture to cover. I just encourage you uh, to go ahead and take some notes. Um, if you don't have your notebook, uh, you can always just use your phone. Uh, that's what I do pretty much every week is I just use my phone. If you have an iPhone, uh, Apple Notes is already downloaded for you. It's right there. Uh, just jump in there, grab a note. Uh, if you have an Android, there's a church right down the street here who <laughs> would love to help you with whatever y'all Android people do. That's just a joke, y'all. You, y- y'all remember last week? Unity in the body. On iPhone and Android, we all serve the same God. Okay, so just uh, a look at what we're going to be doing this morning. Uh, we're going to be considering his creation to start with. And what that's going to be is that's just going to be pretty much a setup, like a hook, the thing that's going to help us remember our message for today. So we're going to consider his creation. Um, and then we're going to get into offense forgiveness, and love. Now, each one of those could be a sermon in and of themselves, so there is a lot to cover, but my goal this morning, what I'm aiming to do is to get from offense to love as quickly as possible. Amen? Amen. All right, so first thing, uh, considering his creation. Oftentimes throughout the Bible, uh, we are told to look to God's creation. Um, Job 12, 7 to 8 says this, just ask the animals and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you. So consider his creation. Uh, In Luke, we are told to consider the ravens, consider the lilies. In Proverbs, consider the ant and the way that the ant works. So we consider his creation, and we can learn so much through. Um, in our house, we actually have three animals. The first one is Lucky. We're going to have some pictures. So that's Lucky, the dog. Um, I was working one day, and my wife called me and said, uh, we're out and about. I want to go ahead and get this dog. I said, absolutely not. We do not need another dog. And come home, and there's Lucky. <laughs> so the next one is Oliver. He's the cat. Uh, he's the king of the castle, or so he thinks anyway. And of course, no household is complete without a caged rodent, so (laughs) that is our hamster. Cuddles, Cuddles, there you go. Cuddles has a name. (laughs) All right, just give me one second here. I gotta, this thing keeps shutting off on me. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I had it set up. Doors that way. <laughs> okay, Let me just get back into it. I'll work with it. All right, so lucky Oliver Cuddles. Cuddles doesn't make his way into the story. Um, Oliver does briefly, but who we're going to focus on today is Lucky. Now, just saying that, um, I can actually read my wife's mind, and she is not very happy because Oliver is the favorite. Um, Oliver the caddy is the favorite, and uh, the reason is because there's four of us in the house, and all four of us are cat people, and I know that's kind of weird, I'm a dude, but we are all cat people, Uh, so it's just, I won't get into the whole cat versus dog thing, I already probably did enough damage with the Android (laughs) iPhone thing, but the thing is with a dog, you just pet a dog for like seven hours straight, and as soon as you're done, they just want more attention. And that's just, that's too much for us. The, the cat, like if you just so happen to get the chance, like the privilege to pet the cat, <laughs> then you got about two to three minutes and that dude's like, all right, I'm done. That's enough. Stop touching me. So for whatever reason, we love that type of abuse. So we're cat people. <laughs> 
And truth be told, we're not very good at hiding that. So the fact that Oliver is the favorite, whenever we get at home, the dog's all jumping around, and it's just lucky that's too much energy, just go lay down. And then the cat decides to bless us with his presence, and he gets the attention. Whenever we're laying on the couch watching TV, you do the little cat noise, call your cat up to you, and Lucky hears the sound. She knows it's a cat sound, but she wants to come anyway with all that dog energy, and it's Lucky, just go lay down. But here's why we're going to consider Lucky today. As often as that happens, and as bad as we are at hiding it, she never takes offense. She's just ready to love. So the love that is in her for us, it just trumps any little bit of offense that there would be. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about this morning is offense. So have you ever been offended? Have you ever been sinned against or hurt in any kind of way? Of course you have, right? It happens to all of us on some level. Uh, the Bible actually tells us that it's guaranteed to happen. Matthew 18:7 says, What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin. Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who is doing the tempting? In other translations, the word offense is actually uh, used in place of temptation. So it reads that offenses are inevitable. And in fact, some translations say that it's necessary. Offenses are necessary, that it's going to happen. But what you do with that offense is what's going to make all the difference. So it can either make you stronger or weaker. It can build you up. It can tear you down. Or in a more serious way, in a spiritual way, it can be of God or it can be of Satan. Now, of God is forgiveness and love. Thank you all for coming today. That is the message. If we get the worship team to come back up, that's, that's it. But wouldn't it be great if we could just hear that and just be changed? But a lot of times we have to go through some stuff, right? We have to work through it. And honestly, a lot of times the best thing that can happen to us is we go through that stuff and we just come to the end of ourselves, so whenever we get to the end of ourselves, we can finally just, we're just so willing and ready to just give it all to God. We, we've tried and we've tried and we've tried and we realize that, God, I just need you. I cannot do this on my own. So we give it all to God and now we can finally live for him. And we'll talk about that more as we go through today's message. But of Satan is self-righteousness, bitterness, hate, resentment holding a grudge, and it normally goes in that order, too. So the first thing that happens is we're like, man, I did not deserve that. Why did they say that? Why did they do that? Or why didn't they? Or why wasn't I? So we put ourselves in a position where we believe that we did or did not deserve something. So self-righteousness. And this is pretty much a natural thing, so there's something that we have to do to combat this. There's something we have to do to get over this. So what can we do? Jesus tells us what we can do in Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 25. It says, Then he, Jesus, said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? So what do you benefit if you are right? What do you benefit if you didn't deserve that? But now that relationship is ruined. Now you're lost, destroyed on the inside. So we must give up our own way daily. It's a daily surrender, y'all. So we have to realize that we are no longer living for ourselves. Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He died a sinner's death. He redeemed us, reconciled us back to God, made us a new creation through himself so that we can no longer live for ourselves. We live for his sake. We die to ourselves. So I was at a uh, Pastor Lucas' house uh, not too long ago, and Lucas and Devin and I were talking about this topic of offense, and Devin let me borrow this book. It's by John Brevere. It's called The Bait of Satan, and that is a perfect title for a book on offense. Bait of Satan by John Brevere. If you have a chance, I would go ahead and read that. Uh, but I want to go ahead and read a quote out of that. It says, if you 
have given yourself totally to Jesus and are committed to his care, you cannot be offended because you are not your own. Those who are hurt and disappointed are those who have come to Jesus for what he can do for them, not because of who he is. So we come to Jesus for who he is, not for what he can do for us. And since we're living for him, we can no longer live for ourselves. We're telling ourselves, I'm right. I, I didn't deserve that. Everybody else is telling us the same thing, that you're right. You didn't deserve that, but now you're lost. Now you're destroyed on the inside because what was once a life-giving, great relationship is now destroyed. And what's worse yet is the way that it affects our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So we're holding on to these grudges. We're building up this hate in our heart, and we're wondering why we feel so far from God. God, where are you? Why do I not feel you moving in my life? So here's the thing. It has nothing to do with God not approving or God disciplining us or God distancing himself from us because we're not living the way that he wants us to do. What it has everything to do with is the fact that we're distancing ourselves from him because we're allowing the enemy to convince us that we deserve better. And the fact is that we don't deserve better, y'all. If you have come face to face with your sin and you took the sin to the cross and you've received forgiveness from our Lord and Savior, you know exactly what we deserve. And praise be to God that we do not get what we deserve. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we live for Christ. And living for Christ is to deny self. Live for his sake and not our own. And how easily we can be offended. This is how easily we can be offended. It'd be like my wife Nicole coming to me and telling me that uh, we got invited to Matt and Morgan's house to, do, uh, to eat dinner. Um, so they've invited us and say, okay, well, it's tonight. Well, it's kind of last minute, isn't it? Yeah. They said that Daryl couldn't make it to dinner tonight, so they had a bunch of ribs. So... Y'all are invited. It's like, what? What, what are we, the second string rib-eating friends? Like, why didn't we get invited first? We should have been invited to begin with. We love eating the ribs that Morgan makes and Matt takes credit for. They are delicious. It's like, and then Cameron overhears this, and he's like, man, what? Y'all got invited to Matt's house for ribs? And I love Morgan's ribs that Matt takes credit for. Why didn't I get invited at all? At least y'all got invited. Man, I thought me and Matt were closer than that. I thought for sure that he would invite me. So then a little bit of bitterness builds up and it leads to hate. Why didn't he invite me? I thought we were friends. Now he's holding on to a grudge that's weighed down by all those things. And the next thing you know, Cameron and Matt haven't spoken in years. Every time Cameron sees Matt, he feels, physically can feel that hate in his heart. And Matt sees Cameron and he just feels that hurt. What happened? We were such good friends. I have no idea. So now this is obviously a hypothetical scenario. Um, But what I want to do this morning is I want to share a personal story with y'all. This is actually a very personal story. It's the part of my life that I really do not talk about uh, much at all. The hurt and the pain that is associated with this story is by far the worst thing that I've been through. And the the reason I want to share it with y'all is because it all started with a tiny little offense. And it was met with another offense and relationship was destroyed. So this story uh, about my, me and my dad, our relationship, uh, my dad has always been like a best friend to me. He was the best man at my wedding, the whole nine yards. So in fact, uh, the only reason I'm actually here in North Carolina today is because I moved down from Pennsylvania to live with my dad uh, whenever he and my mom split up. So one day, uh, we're all just hanging out at my dad's house, and long story short, but an offense was taken. 
and it got pretty heated, and things were said that didn't need to be said, but it, it finally got to the point where my dad was like, you know what, it doesn't even matter, I'm done. I'm like, what do you mean you're done? He said, I don't want to hear, see, talk to you ever again. I'm like, that's, that's ridiculous. So it, it absolutely made me mad. So he took offense, and I took offense to him taking offense. And long story short, we just did not talk. So fast forward four years later, um, this is actually a tough time in our life. My, me and my wife, we're, we're trying to make things work. I'm actually living in Kentucky. My wife and kids are living down here in North Carolina. And my dad and I still haven't spoken four years. And I receive a call uh, from home, Pennsylvania, about my Aunt Judy. Um, Aunt Judy was one of those people. She was one of those aunts. She didn't have any of her own children. Uh, we cousins and uh, her nieces and nephews, they were her children. So she was quite literally like another mom to all of us. So I receive a call that um, she's not doing too well. Uh, so might want to come back home. So I'm getting ready. I'm trying to plan everything. And then I get another phone call. Yes, yeah, she, Aunt, Aunt Judy, she went ahead, she passed. So we need you to come home. So I book a flight from Kentucky down to North Carolina to get my kids and my wife. And we load up the car and we head to Pennsylvania, drive through the night, drive all the way. And the whole way, what is on my mind is I'm just thinking that, man, this, this is probably the opportunity that me and my dad's relationship is going to be redeemed, you know. I'm going to see him. This is my dad's older sister, my Aunt Judy. So I'm going to see him. And, I mean, you know how death does for people. They, it kind of brings you back to reality. And I'm thinking, man, this is, this, this is really hurtful that Aunt Judy is gone. But, you know, my, my dad might be able to have a relationship with my kids, and we can go ahead and move on. So I get to my mom's house. I drove through the night. I get to my mom's house, and it's like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm exhausted. So I say, Mom, here, here's the girls. I'm going up to bed. I'm going to sleep. I need to get some rest. So no sooner do I close my eyes, my mom is standing at the edge of my bed, and she's saying, Bud, get up. Come on. Your uncles are downstairs. They need to talk to you. My, two, my dad's two oldest brothers, Uncle Bill and Uncle Joe. So they're standing in my mom's living room. So I wake up, I go downstairs, and I'm like, what is going on? Why, why are y'all at my mom's house? They said, buddy, you need to sit down. We need to tell you something. So they proceeded to tell me that that night, as I was driving through up to Pennsylvania, um, my dad in his recliner had a heart attack, and he died. And I just remember... Like the next hour, I was just completely numb. I couldn't, I couldn't process it. I couldn't do anything. I was just exhausted. I was sleep deprived, shocked, and I mean, just all of the emotions, and I couldn't process it. But I remember whenever it finally sank in, all I wanted to do was go back. I just wanted to go back. Well, this is so dumb. What are we doing? But I couldn't go back. It was too late. The whole time, neither one of us were willing to be the bigger man, if you will. Neither one of us were willing to let go of our pride, our self-righteousness. So there was and is no closure for me and my dad's relationship. So please, I'm urging you, if you're in a similar situation, to just go ahead. If you're holding on to a grudge, if you're holding on to an offense, just let it go. Make the call. Drive to their house. Do whatever you got to do. Because I... Oh, thank you, Lord. I can tell you from experience, the, the moment that it becomes too late is when you're going to want to do that the most. And you're not going to be over to. All right, so the Bible says that we are to go privately. Thank you. <clears throat> Matthew 18, 15 says that we are to go privately. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. So notice that it doesn't say, go ahead and make a Facebook post about it. <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody else except the person, or go ahead and bottle that up. Keep it inside of you. 
No, it says go to that person privately. Let them know, hey, this is what's going on. Let's go ahead and work through this. And let's be honest, there are some of the little offenses that we could just let go of, like, like right away, just let it go. You don't need to go into the grocery store and find that guy and be like, hey, buddy, I'm here because I know you've seen that I saw that parking spot first. <laughs> I was going to make a Facebook post about it, but I remembered Matthew 18, so I'm coming to you privately right now. No, just let it go. Y'all, I am 100% convinced that God had his hand in making the movie Frozen. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. For months and months and months, hours on end, we had to hear Elsa scream at the top of her lungs, let it go. (laughs) Just let it go. There's no reason to hold on to those little things. Okay, so now we'll get into forgiveness. Um, If you ever disciplined your dog, you know what I'm talking about. Um, You discipline them, you put them in the cage. As soon as you go right back to them, they're just ready to forgive. They're just ready to love. And that's another reason that we're considering the dog this morning. So Matthew 6, 14 to 15 says, If you forgive those who sin against you, Your heavenly Father will forgive you, but if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. So that's how serious our unforgiveness is. We have to forgive to be forgiven, and there is no kind of forgiving. Jesus doesn't kind of forgive us. It's as far as the east is from the west. There is no kind of forgiving. But a lot of us can relate to Peter in Matthew 18, verse 21. And it says, Then Peter came to him, Jesus, and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? And Peter, thinking he was being generous, said, Seven times? Then Jesus replied, No, not seven times. And if you're Peter, you're probably like, Man, that's great. It's hard enough to forgive somebody one time, let alone seven times. Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. As if to say an infinite amount of times is how we are to forgive. And then Jesus goes into a parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors who was brought in owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. The man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will repay all the debt. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. Thank you, Lord. When the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him just a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged him for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested, put in prison until his debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that happened. The king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I have mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt That is what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So forgive if you want to be forgiven. And remember that whatever forgiveness we have to give our brothers and sisters is nothing compared to the forgiveness that we've already received from our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So this is kind of how it works. Offense is taken. We build on top of that with bitterness, hate, resentment. 
and we hold on to a grudge, and now the forgiveness that we're going to need to reconcile ourselves back in that relationship, it's going to be great. It's going to take a lot of forgiveness. So it's kind of like a credit card. So we know a credit card can be a good thing or a bad thing. You can either rack up a bunch of points or you can pay a bunch of interest, one or the other. Uh, if you use a no, uh, credit card, you probably uh, know or you hopefully know that the name of the game is to pay that thing off before any interest charges hit, right? You use it, you collect your points, uh, you pay it off right away. If you don't, then that cup of coffee, coffee just cost you $40. That's, that's the way it works. So when it comes to offense, self-righteousness, bitterness, hate, resentment, holding a grudge, these are the interest charges. These are the things that build up over time, right? And forgiveness is the currency that God gives us to pay off this credit card. Y'all follow me? God, being the great financial advisor that he is, is saying, hey, why don't you pay that credit card off immediately? Why don't you pay it off before any of the interest charges hit, before any of that, that hate or that bitterness or that resentment comes into play? Pay it off immediately. The forgiveness, the currency that you're going to need to pay that thing off is going to be far less if you pay it off immediately. Or better yet, pay with cash. Cash being love. So if you met that offense with love, if you just say, hey, you know what? You might have cut me off at the intersection, but I just love you, brother. I don't even care. I love you. Then there is no transaction to the credit card at all. So there is no chance of any interest building, any bitterness, any hate. You, you already cut it off. You paid with cash. Y'all had no idea I was going to go all Dave Ramsey this morning, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so meet the offense with love. So that's, that's the last thing we're going to talk about this morning. Um, if I can get the worship team to, to come back up, now we're going to talk about love as we close out. So like I said, I'm a cat person, uh, but there is no denying the fact that there is no creature on earth who loves the way that a dog loves, right? And that's why we are considering the dog this morning um, as we talk about these topics of offense and forgiveness. Proverbs 10, 12 says, hatred stirs up quarrels, but love makes up for all offenses. All. Somebody say all. All offenses. Love makes up for all offenses. Come on, Cameron. Thank you, Lord. Here's the thing, you cannot have offense and love in your heart at the same time. It's impossible. You are literally trying to have something that is from God dwell with something that is from Satan. And if we, if we would just let go of ourselves and just love the way that the Father wants us to love, we wouldn't take offense and there would be no need for forgiveness. Being offended or having the need to be forgiven is tied to our own self-righteousness, our own selfish desires. And we should forgive on a level that just says that I forgive you so much that I don't even want to forgive you because now I see that my forgiveness is tied to my own self-righteousness, my own selfish desires. Rather than living for his righteousness rather than giving up my ways for his sake. I just love you. And I just want you to know that I love you. And I want you to know that I love you not because of something you did or didn't do, not because of something I did or I didn't do, but I love you because of what Jesus did and because of who he is. I don't live for you. I don't live for me. I live for Jesus. So if you want to be recognized as a child of God, consider the dog. Take no offense. Forgive and just love. Because here's the thing. When you have from a worldly perspective every right to take offense and you don't, and you just love, then it would just blow people's minds. And it'll be in that moment that they will be able to see your Lord and Savior living 
inside of you. Let's pray. Father God, we repent this morning, Lord. God, for any bit of hatred or offense that is in our heart, God, any bit of us that has been living for self, Lord, we repent. God, help us to take this message today and use it in our lives to be a light for you, Lord, to just to glorify you in every way possible, God. God, we thank you that we can just put our our hope and our trust in you, Lord. We thank you that you do work all things for the good of those who love you, God, and are called according to your purpose. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody in here who hasn't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity this morning. Is there anybody here tonight who has not received Jesus as our Lord and Savior and who would like to today? I just want to read you. I want to lead you in a prayer. So if you would, just go ahead and raise your hand. If that's you today. Lord, I want to believe that everybody in here knows you, and I want to thank you for it, Lord. And I want, I want to pray that you continue to work in their lives, Lord. Continue to, to bless them, Lord. And, Lord, that they just continue to surrender to you more and more each day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we hope this podcast has blessed you. In case you didn't know, we are in the middle of renovating a brand new facility right here in Brunswick County, North Carolina. So listen, two things. Please take a moment and pray for us. Also, if you'd like to give to the ministry, sign on to the website at mycoastalchurch.com slash giving. Hey, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Grace and peace.